What is up, YouTube? We're out here doing the two of the things we like and dislike, okay? Shingling we love and recovers, all right? So I feel very strongly about recovers. I don't encourage them ever. Now, some people are totally okay recovering. I'm one of the people who don't like to do layovers at all, okay? So I tried to talk the guy out of this. He's selling the house. He just wants it to pass uh, an inspection. So they had a little problem area over here before. And uh, we tore up that little patch. It was literally just shingles stacked in a line up and down. So um, they all, we also took, uh, took off the ridge. That's one of the first things you want to do is you want to prep the roof deck for a recover. If you can't talk your homeowners out of it. And it's not to get more money from a tear off. It's, it's because, you know, the roof isn't going to last nearly as long. The way I like to describe uh, two layers uh, versus one layer, right? So picture a pencil, okay? If you got a pencil, you got one pencil, you break it in half, now you got two pencils, right? But you didn't create any more lead. So it doesn't do you any good, really, okay? Um, and then if you've, versus if you just had two pencils, it's going to last a lot longer, all right? So that's kind of how I view this whole recover situation. And not to mention, it's going to cost a lot more for the next person when there's two layers. Because nobody likes to get into two layers. People really jack up their prices. A lot of times people jack them up even extra because they don't even want to do them, you know. But, uh, so anyway, like I said, we're going to prep the roof deck. They had these two vents right here. And that was it. So we went ahead and we cut ridge vent. You can see they've got the insulation right in here. Uh, which means these are vaulted ceilings. So... Those vents weren't doing much anyway. We went ahead and got ridge vent instead of uh, those turtle vents. They're pretty low anyway, and there was only two of them. So we cut, we're cutting new ridge vent in. And then uh, as far as the bottom section goes, this is one step that I feel a lot of people forget to do. I'll see people like laying new ice shield over and everything like that, which I don't, I don't think that makes any difference at all. If you just lay one row of ice shield here and start shingling, it, it's really not making a difference, especially if there's ice shield underneath here, which there is. <laughs> see how this is stuck that's ice shield okay so what i've done is i cut back the first the first tab right there and the reason i do that is so that we don't have a bulk at the bottom you'll still you know an experienced uh roofer or a roof quoter or whatever will still be able to tell that there's two layers on it when they come up because we're going to put this uh starter on still and we actually are in a rare situation where if you see the reason i cut this back here because we've got to put gutter apron on we're actually going to just cut this back and put it right on over it we'll just make sure we put our starter on and a nice dagger so what we're going to end up doing is you see that's uh way too much of an overhang so we can now float this in here a little bit nicer now that we've cut that back off just a smidgen so uh rather than this thick part being all the way out there and then this part having trouble gripping in the future we went ahead and cut that bottom row off some people like to cut even more off which i may actually do here um i may cut an extra row off that i'll let you know but yeah we're gonna do that put on our gutter apron we're pretty much gonna shingle as normal with i don't have them up here but i'll go ahead and show you the dang box inch and three quarter roofing nails when you're doing a recover always use inch and three quarter roofing nails okay don't do inch and a quarters you know that's just what you standard using or standardly using so always inch and three quarter and we tore off an extra row up here uh because we decided to cut ridge vent so the old row came up to here and then there was another one so we tore off one extra usually we just tear off the cap but because we switched to ridge vent we had to tear off an extra row here because inch and three quarter nails are going to have trouble grabbing if there was extra extra uh row there so now we're going to have no issues at all with our uh, ridge vent grabbing this one we actually have to change to a brown vent which you guys have already seen me do on some of the heritage quarter build uh apartments that we've done those big buildings there so there's a uh, we'll pull off this flashing here install a brown vent just regular pipe here we did a little clean out on it so that it sits nice and flush i may have them take this this out as well that way uh 
That way it floats a lot nicer and you don't have this big bulky section around your pipes. But that's it for now. We got our products from Beacon. And uh, I'll be updating you guys in a little bit here. Thank you. All right, got the starter on and the gutter apron as well. I did try to uh, take this up. You can see that was sticking anyway. The uh, old bottom, it wouldn't have done anything if we did. So what I did was I just nailed these on right, right low into the gutter apron. And uh, my other nails, my top nails will go like this and the other shingle. So it'll be held in plenty of spots. Started with my one footer as always, so that I break right about here, and it's nowhere near a seam. The nails are nowhere near a seam. It's also nowhere near a seam here, so water will never be able to get to these nails or this gutter apron. So that's what we got going on there. Over on this side, we're going to have to, by the time we get over here, we're going to have to cut, we'll have to tear a piece of our drip edge on the nailing flange part rip it down with a knife and then we're just going to face nail into these uh the fascia you see how they got all their trim nails in there anyway but at least it'll have some drip edge on it and then uh we'll overhang our actual drip edge you can see they didn't do much of an overhang here Try to get out of that sunlight. they didn't do much of an overhang here so when we put our drip edge on it's probably going to come out flush with this if not even a little more out so we'll run our starter probably about this far over or so and uh, should make it plenty watertight on that edge always fun <laughs> always fun when my little brother sees my truck and comes trashing up my job Jesus uh, where Oh no, that's James's woman. Yeah, you better not be doing shit around homeowners, bro. What are you doing? Just get off work at the Flying J? No, I didn't get off work. I actually. Oh, the, work what is it? The pilot? Oh, it is the Flying J. Yeah, representing. Call seventy-five an hour more than I made with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't even got to fucking tear my ass up, bro. There you go. A lot of room for growth Worst too. Part of my day is shoveling shit, but this is this job is shoveling shit all day for less money. <laughs> Put his ass to work though, real quick. <laughs> Get them vets out, boy. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my little chicken bone in the corner, working on my drip edge. We're knifing it off. You can see I'm scoring it right down on that clothesline. Then we got to slide it under, but I'm actually able to nail that little bit onto the roof So we we didn't have to add any face nails Down inside of that drip there What the mug shot where he looked like he was crying That's what happens when you run <laughs> Okay, all right. Fair play to you, James. <laughs>